In this one, we're gonna do three kinds of validation. That's two methods directly on the form itself. One that's for the entire form, the other one that's for the field in particular. And then we're gonna make our own custom validation method that actually is gonna go directly on the field, whether it's the form field or the model field. So going back into forms.py, we're gonna come in here and do define clean, and it takes in self. And then we're just gonna do cleaned data equals to super and submit URL form self.clean. Okay, so we'll save that. And after that clean data, we're just gonna write out print cleaned data, and then we will see what happens here. So we save this, go back into our form, hit submit, and it says fill it out, hit shorten, what we see in the terminal is now we've got two clean datas printing. And the reason that there's two printing has to do with this right here. So this clean method is called every single time the form valid method is called. That's why we can do print clean data. Now, what does it mean by clean data? That means we can actually validate this data is real and works. So that also means that URL, we can say URL equals to cleaned data dot git and URL, we can also use URL equals to cleaned data URL. The reason line 12 uh, works better than line 11 is because we know line six is required or the field is required. So I'll get rid of that one. I've got my URL here and I can just print out the URL. I'll get rid of this clean data call here, save that. And then we can refresh in here and commit, uh, submit it. And we see that we've got the URL right here. That's good. So um, what we wanna do now is actually break down this URL. But before I do that, I'm gonna talk about one other method and that's clean the field name. So in this case, clean URL is equal to self and the URL is self.cleaneddata URL. It's the same sort of thing, but this clean method or this right here creates that cleaned data. So we can actually go through that data and look for the URL itself. And then at the end of it, we have to return that URL. So I can print it again with another URL there. We save that and we hit submit. We should see it printed twice and then the clean data on the last one. Okay, so these are the two different ways on how we can do this. Now, if this was a different, or if this was a different field name like ABC, we would come in here and change all of the instances of URL, including this one right there. But it's not like that. So it's just like this. This is all very clear in the form validation stuff. So if you search form validation, you can see on a specific field, this is what we did here. You can do it for all sorts of stuff for you know email. Um, you could also do it for like, like numbers. You can do everything that you'd want in this. And then you can also do it inside of just the regular clean method. Now, the bit main difference between these two is this is validating directly on the field this is validating on the form. So they render just slightly different when they come out in the uh, HTML. It might not look different here, um, or when we do it, it might not look different on ours, but it definitely is rendered differently because they're treated differently. This is just a general validation thing for our overall field. This is for, or excuse me, our overall form. This is for an individual field. So if we had other fields here, so if we had another, char field, and we call this ABC, got rid of the label. This right here would only exist for that first one. So I'm gonna leave that out. You would have to write, to make ABC, you'd have to write another clean method called ABC, and then that would do that ABC field, but you could still do it in here as well. Um, so that we cover that also in Trijango 1.9 and 1.8. Um, so now that we've got this, let's go ahead and write a validator. So we're gonna do from Django.core.validators. We're gonna import the URL validator. That's all. And then we're gonna do, that's what we'll do first. And down in our clean URL, we're gonna clean out this URL. So we'll say URL validator equals to URL validator, a instance of that URL validator. And then we're gonna try and validate it by, do, by calling it with the URL itself. And then if it doesn't work, we're gonna raise an exception, which is raise forms.validation 
error. And we'll just say invalid URL for this field. So we'll save that and we'll come back in here and hit continue. Up, oh, we got something wrong here. We got key error. Let's make sure this is saved and saved. So forms line 11 and clean. Let's just remove this for now. Come back to that in a second. So we'll refresh in here and we've got invalid field uh, for invalid URL for this field. So to make it valid, I just put HTTP and I put an actual URL in there, hit shorten, and now it's valid. Very cool. So it's actually allowing it to go through, right? That's the point as we see on our clean data here, which if we get rid of printing out the URL and only print out the clean data uh, for that URL here and do get URL, we should now only see it being printed in our terminal window if the form is valid. So right now it should be valid. So let's refresh and hit shorten. And we see that it is actually valid. Now, why did this error happen? This error happened because the it wasn't actually clean. So let's try it again. And I'll print out the cleaned data. We'll save it and we'll run that again, hit continue. And it's shortening, it's doing fine. Let's do a different one. And I get this key error of URL. And I see this because if I scroll up, I don't have any clean data. So in this case, we would do, we could just change it back to those parentheses and do clean data.get URL. And we could still run the same sort of stuff, right? We could do it actually on that clean method itself for the URL. So let's go ahead and try that out. We're gonna cut this and paste it here. So again, the URL is there. And now I'm gonna get rid of my other clean method, save that and we'll refresh in here and hit continue. And it again is saying invalid URL. So once I, the reason that it worked this time is because I don't have the same clean method coming through. This is actually the only clean method or the only validator that's actually working for that field. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And I'm also going to, actually I will comment out all of these in just a moment, but now what I wanna do is create my own validation method. So we'll call it def validate URL and it's going to take in a value and we'll say URL val validator equals to URL validator and then we'll do try and this time it's going to be URL validator just like we did before instead we just do value and then we'll say accept and we'll say raise validation error and we'll say invalid URL for this field and then finally, we'll just return that value. So this means I can actually put this on the field itself with validators, which validators can be a variety of validators, but I'm just doing it as one, which is this validate URL here. I paste that in. I'm gonna comment out the other methods, save that, and go back into our field. And we get validation error is not defined. Oops, that's because we didn't import it yet. So let's go ahead and import it. So from Django.core.exceptions, import validation error. So we can raise that validation error, refresh, hit continue, invalid URL for this field. Great, so that, that just cleaned up a lot of things for us. Now, of course, if I went back into this clean URL function and deleted everything, I'll just comment it, every, all the actual validation stuff out. And if I said, if, com in URL, or well, let's just say if not com in URL, raise forms.validation error. This is not valid because of no.com. Okay, so we save that and we refresh in here. We hit continue, still invalid URL. And this time I'll do HTTP colon slash slash www dot another.co. We hit shorten. This is validated, no invalidation because of .com. Now, so this validator worked, this one didn't. Of course, we absolutely could make this into its new one. So I can cut this out and do validate.com value and the same sort of thing. Go back. But instead of forms dot, we'll do just a regular validation error. There's a reason for this. Um, 
And then otherwise we'll just return value and it should be calm in value now. So we copy this and paste it in here, save that. The clean method doesn't really matter anymore. So we can comment that out again and we come back, refresh, hit continue, same thing. If I add uh, M to it, now it works. Um, so that is some validation that we can do directly on the field, but we can take this one step further and do it in our models as well. Before I do that, I'm gonna remove these and put them in its own module. So we'll do new file and we'll call it validators.py. And we are going to cut these out, paste them in validators, save it, go back into forms and do dot from dot validators, import, validate URL and validate.com, save that. And now in our models, we can do that same sort of thing. So um, from dot val uh, dot validators import and the two of them are well we could just copy this actually and we want it below utils and now we can come back and here and say validators equals to this validate url and validate.com so we save that and since we made changes on the models let's go ahead and do some stuff here and we'll do python manage.py make migrations and python manage.py migrate. We did this because we altered the field, we altered the model, so we actually want to do those migrations. We go back into the admin. Notice I can't log in normally, or at least the login didn't save. So if I just do one, two, um, seven, eight thousand, I should be able to jump in easier. And that is CFE, learn code. Um, code 2016 there we go and now I jump into my URLs and I want to add a new URL and I'll do HTTP um, dot co we'll hit save and continue this is not valid because of no.com so these are some validation errors that allow us to do it not only in the forms but also in the models and that's where we created this itself now doing it in the forms can absolutely and 100% will still be useful, but that's why I showed it to you first. But these other validators are also useful too, um, so you can do it directly on the field itself, whether it's in the model or whether it's in the form, this is a little bit more powerful of a way to do that. Now, the way our current validator works, maybe is good, maybe isn't. Because if we go back into either one and we just typed out another.com and hit shortened. Uh, let's try that again. Another.com and hit shorten. It's gonna say invalid URL. That is a valid URL. It just doesn't have HTTP on it. So we might want to rethink how that URL works in the future. I'm not gonna worry about it now, but I will say that HTTP works. So we now have our validators working to a point that's pretty solid. We could also just say, inside of our validators, um, we could do one more thing. And that is, we'll add another value or another validator itself. So I'll say uh, value one equals to false and or false, and then value two equals to false as well. And all I'm going to do here is First off, change the where the validation error happens. I'll just say if value one, or excuse me, if not value one and not value two, then you're gonna raise this. So in this case, that means if they're both false, um, this one would raise the exception. So we'll say value one is false. And then we'll create value two being equal to HTTP colon slash slash plus value, and now we can actually check that value, value two with by doing value two, or sorry, value two, we'll say URL, or value one valid, valid two valid, or invalid would be a better term here. And then value one invalid would be true. And now value two URL is equal to that. And now we do value two valid, and that's going to be true. And now these are going to be value one and two. I'll explain these again in just a second. 
So we save that. Let's go ahead and make sure it's working. I hit continue, invalid URL for this field. So um, what we should be seeing here is if in value equals to false and value two is equal to false. That's how the validation error should actually work. So let's try that again. I refresh, hit continue. Um, this is still giving me the invalid. So invalid one should be true here for this validator. So I'm gonna go ahead and print out value one invalid. Oh, I know why. Um, they're both not doing it correctly because this should be value two, not value one. So we save that, refresh, hit continue, and now it's working. Okay, so value one, value, all right? That is good. So what we have now is that the validation error actually works and we have two different values. So if I change this to another.com and hit shorten, it still is valid, right? So it's actually validating it because we added that HTTP to it. Um, it doesn't change the value because we just left the original value that was put in, but we did say that the HTTP is there. We might actually want it to change the value, uh, but I'll, we'll test that later. But for now, the validation stuff is important because now what we did was we first off ran through the validation of it without HTTP or without assuming that it's there. And then the second one, we just added it and did that. And then lastly, we raised that validation error um, in there. Cool. So now we've got these validations and we're able to do a lot of stuff with this. So in the next one, we will actually save this data and, and hopefully see some more stuff that's going on. If you have any questions on this, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.